Alright guys. Well, quickly turning back into another gloomy day. Oh, Jesus here on Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. Uh, heading back from uh, Sister Sandy's with a an aching back, a, an aching heart but a much lighter weight off my shoulders as mile by mile. So what happened, uh, about two miles up the road, I suddenly got all of these warning lights about my ABS brake lights, and I guess there's some other warning lights. So just driving down the road, uh, as the sun goes down and I get ready to head over a couple of mountain ranges and down this very steep pass, I'm getting these warning lights that I'm having some sort of problem with my brakes. I'm hoping it's just the brake fluid. Anyway, time to be uh, getting this truck service before heading out. So anyway, uh, Sandy and I were talking about telling stories, which is pretty much more and more about what uh, Humpty Dumpty tribe uh, is pretty much going to become. Uh, it's, it's pretty much just me telling stories. I'm, I've moved all of that doom and gloom over there to Collapse Chronicles, so you can take all of that. So, Humpty Dumpty Tribe is no longer a Doomer channel, okay? I am a Doomer and a depressed collapsitarian, of course, but uh, I just, I, I just want to move that shit over to uh, Collapse Chronicles because Humpty Dumpty Tribe, I really don't give a fuck at this point uh, what this channel turns into and so more and more I am just going to use this as a vehicle uh, just to tell stories so if anybody is interested in just crazy ham bone stories uh, you know the the art of telling stories that so you know if you have a uh, a social media thing and, and you tell stories about yourself then you're just a narcissist you are a narcissist so people will sit here and and they go oh well this is just some guy telling a story and fuck that narcissist I'm gonna go over to Netflix and watch a and watch a story with some actors reading a script. So anyway, uh, the, the art of storytelling, we need to bring it back as this world collapses. The, uh, the art, the lost art of storytelling uh, is, uh, is going to make a return here shortly. Uh, that for 200,000 years what we had was each other telling stories. So uh, what is the point of me telling stories? I don't know. Some of them I just think are funny stories. Obviously if, I, if, the, if the story that I have to tell has some moral to it somewhere that'll be great. I'm not guaranteeing anything, any story I ever tell on uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe is going to have any moral to it. Uh, obviously, uh, I tell stories, you know, just where misery loves company, just, uh, you know, where other people, it's not like when I tell a story about myself, I, I act like I'm the only person who has ever you know, who, who has ever had uh, this 
basic version of events. We all, just as humans going through life, we, we share similar stories, we get similar challenges, uh, similar roadblocks put in our way, and uh, just how we dealt with it. So uh, you can decide uh, why is Hambone telling us this story? And uh, you can take a wild guess why I am telling this story today. So Sandy and I were talking about, you know, I meant for, for the few of you guys who listened to my story yesterday about how I spent my 50th birthday, how I uh, spent my 50th birthday down uh, on the banks of the Mother of God River uh, in the Peruvian Amazon is, uh, is where I turned 50. But anyway, the, the character joining me is, is one of the major characters that uh, I have mentioned a million times, and this is the character of Lulu. Uh, who I, you know, Lulu is my, uh, you know, my Trump tard friend from Austin who I often refer to correctly as the closest thing to a, to a soulmate I've ever had. You, you know, as I was talking about psycho bitches recently about how I have had a lifetime of being, uh, you know, sucked down the rabbit hole of all of these goddamn various psycho bitches uh, that have just eaten my fucking life. The psycho bitches I hate, and worse than the psycho bitches I hate are the psycho bitches I love. Who uh, it's the psycho, uh, the, the psycho bitches that I am in love with calls me a, a hell of a lot bigger toll on my life than psycho bitches I hate. But anyway, I made clear in that rant a few days ago about energy vampires that Lulu, uh, my, uh, and she still is my best friend in the world to, to this day, uh, that Lulu is the one exception to the rule that uh, Lulu is the least psycho bitch woman I, I, I have ever had the pleasure of knowing, I have ever had the pleasure of being in love with. Uh, the woman just, uh, despite the fact that she was in a relationship with me, uh, she is not a drama queen. Uh, she's not a game player, she's not a drama queen, she's not perfect, she's a little down the conspiracy wacko rabbit hole, uh, she did vote for Donald Trump twice and will vote for him again in, uh, in 2024. We all have our blind spots, uh, but, but Lulu uh, was the most rock solid uh, woman I ever had the, the you know had the pleasure of uh, you, you know having as a girlfriend. Uh, so anyway, Sandy had just never heard the story of what happened to you and Lulu, meaning as a couple, uh, why, if, if, if this woman is obviously your soulmate, if you obviously uh, love this woman, and uh, I've pretty much loved her since I met her uh, about 20 years ago, uh, why did you stop being a couple. So what's the story? She goes, I know there's a story behind there, so I'm just going to tell the story. Don't know if I'm going to send this to uh, Lulu or not uh, to see if my version 
of how we broke up connects with hers. And uh, so anyway, I'm pretty sure this was the year 2006. I'm pretty sure. And uh, Lulu and I, we were, uh, I was a realtor. I was a real estate agent and house flipper at, uh, at uh, Keller Williams in Austin, Texas. And she was a mortgage broker. We were kind of a team where I would find the property, she would find the money to buy the property, you know. So we were kind of a real estate team. We were best friends, we were lovers, we were running buddies. Uh, we, we both loved to travel. So we had uh, taken about a month vacation maybe four to six weeks vacation that we had taken together to Guatemala is where, so we were, you know, hanging out, uh, you, you know, uh, a lot in Panaha Shell and around the lake and all of that. But uh, for the second half of our vacation, we went over to the very eastern part of Guatemala called Rio Dulce is the name of it and I think to this day you can only reach this area by boat there are no roads in through the jungle the only way in and out of Rio Dulce is the river Rio Dulce is the Sweetwater River basically is what Rio Sweet River so anyway we were uh, we were heading down into the into this little jungle lodge probably at least 10 10 to 15 miles from the nearest road where we took this little boat and washed up at this little remote jungle outpost in the uh, in the Guatemalan rainforest called the Gringo Perdido which was the lost gringo basically is what gringo the lost gringo basically the lost traveler if you wanted to go down there and get be a traveler getting lost so we're there and uh, while we're there we decide we want to go uh, to Belize for a few days we want to go uh, visit the islands off of Belize uh, for a few nights so we uh, made plans to do this and so we went up uh, to Belize which is you know I can make stories about any of this we had we had some you know we got the boat out of the Rio Dulce we hooked up with the boat we crossed into Belize and we were, I can't remember the name of the key that we went to. It wasn't one of the big ones. It was one of the smaller ones. So anyway, we went and spent three nights camping and uh, scuba diving and whatnot, uh, having this little romantic vacation on uh, this little island. Uh, off the coast of Belize and so we headed back uh, to Guatemala and I don't remember why but anyway we decided to do this on a Sunday probably not a real good idea so anyway we on a Sunday we start out of Belize and we take the boat back into Guatemala we were trying to get to the little town of Livingston, Guatemala, on the coast. If you've ever heard that uh, Jimmy Buffett song, Livingston Saturday Night, talking about the town of Livingston, Guatemala, uh, on the eastern uh, coast of Guatemala. It's on the north side of the Rio Dulce, but the boat from Belize didn't drop us off in fucking Livingston where we wanted to be. They, it took us to the town on the other side of the river. So first we had to get a boat, 
going from where we got dumped off. We just ha all we had to do was get across the fucking river back to Livingston so we could catch our boat from Livingston back up to the Gringo Perdido. Okay, so anyway, so we get there and I find out, so it's Sunday morning uh, and we have a layover. It might have been like 45 minutes if, if I'm correct. Uh, we have a layover in this little town uh, waiting for the ferry boat to take us across the river to Livingston and I announced to Lulu that uh, I am going to head out and find some real butter. Uh, imagine trying to find real butter out in the jungles of Guatemala 10 miles from the nearest road. So we had been hungry for some real butter and some good liquor. I can't remember uh, if it was, to, it probably wasn't tequila down there. And I was probably looking for a, pretty sure, a, a good top shelf bottle of rum. So I tell Lulu, sit here, don't let the bus uh, leave, don't let the boat leave without me. I am going to go out into this town on a Sunday and I'm going to come back here in 45 minutes with uh, a pound of real butter and some top shelf rum. I don't think she had much faith in me, so I haul ass out of the boat docks, running up and down the streets in this desperate search. Unbelievably, guys. Unfucking believable. I found some real butter. I, I found some real butter and some top shelf liquor in this little uh, end of the road hell hole in Guatemala. I could not fucking believe it. Uh, so I get back to the boat. We cannot believe that we're actually gonna have some real butter and top shelf liquor. So anyway, the, the boat is just leaving. So all we're doing is going across to Livingston. Now the one thing I was unable to do in whatever this town was, is the fucking ATM was broken, which is a chronic problem in Guatemala. So then my challenge in Livingston, Guatemala, you know, when the bank was closed, was to get an ATM to give me some cash. And I had, uh, you know, it's like the ferry boat was going to drop us off and then the boat upriver was going to leave in 15 minutes. I had, I, I had like 10 or 15 minutes to get off of that fucking ferry boat, uh, find an ATM in Livingston, Guatemala on a Sunday, get some cash and make it back to the boat dock without missing our boat. So... I mean, as soon as the fucking ferry boat hit, I, I looked at Lula, you know, the butter and the uh, liquor were sitting in a little white plastic bag. Uh, you, you know, we had our, our packs from uh, that we had taken to Belize, but the butter and the liquor were just sitting in this shopping bag. I was like a goddamn fool. I didn't. I, we didn't stick them in our bags. The very last words out of my mouth to Lulu when I got off that ferry boat is, "Darling, you know I need to go run get us some money." Uh, I said, "You need to get our shit over on the, you know, on the boat up river." I, I said, "Do not forget our butter and our top shelf liquor." That was the last thing, darling. Do not uh, get us. Uh, do not leave that fucking bag of butter and that top shelf liquor before we disappear up into the fucking jungle for a week with no butter or, or good liquor. And uh, so, with those parting words, I go flying down the streets of Livington, Livingston, Guatemala unbelievably unbelievably I uh, I find an ATM and get the cash 
I come flying back to the boat dock, the boat up river is just pulling out. So I hop on the boat, I barely get on the fucking boat. We're uh, chugging up the river up through this beautiful canyon. So I decide I want to crank, a, you know, I'm going to crack open that bottle or whatever. And uh, so I reach around to get the bag, you know, the shopping bag with the butter and liquor at it. I see no sign of the shopping bag. I turn to Lulu and say, darling, do not fucking tell me you forgot to get the fucking butter uh, and the liquor off of that ferry boat onto this boat. And uh, you all know the fucking story. It's kind of a ham sandwich all over again. And, uh, you know, she just looked at me with this sheepish look on her face and said, Hey, I, uh, I am sorry, you know, whatever. I was busy with the bags, and obviously I left that butter and that liquor. And I, I honestly don't have the memory of uh, what my reaction to that was. I guess anybody saw that little video that Sandy posted on my channel this morning when I could not find my camera. So anyway, uh, I basically let Lulu, you know, in front of a boat full of people. You know, there were probably 12 tourists on the damn boat and uh, I uh, probably was not exactly the uh, best gentleman I could have been. And uh, so anyway, uh, it was a very ugly scene, uh, very embarrassing for, for everybody on the boat, mainly me. So uh, we get back to the Gringo Perdido and uh, I go in our fucking little uh, hut or where, whatever we were staying in and we go out to the dock to, you know, to watch the sunset, probably drinking uh, some fucking piss warm beer or some, you know, some rot gut liquor, whatever it is that we had instead of this top shelf liquor and, and obviously the, uh, obviously the, uh, the, the tension between us is, is pretty fucking ugly and uh, so we're sitting there and Lulu uh, this is what Lulu said to me and I, again I don't know if I'm going to send this video to Lulu uh, for her uh, recounting of the facts as I recall the conversation was she goes, you know, Hambun, she goes, what first attracted me to you? Uh, you know, now years ago, what, what, what first attracted me to you is that on a scale of one to 10, you always treated me like at least an eight. That, you, you know, you were respectful, helping, loving, whatever, that she gave me on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, being a uh, southern gentleman, I guess, uh, she, Lulu gave me an 8 to 10, so she says that is what attracted, she goes, that is what attracted me to you, but lately, Hambun, I gotta let you know that uh, your uh, treatment of me and your behavior around me, I give it about a two, is what uh, she gave me a two. Uh, she rated me as a, a, you know, as a boyfriend and as a lover and whatnot. I had dropped from an eight to a two. And 
so I just kind of uh, looked at her and, and I said, darling, you, you know, I, I said, if that is your honest opinion, uh, that you think that I have fallen in, in, in your eyes from an eight to a two, then uh, obviously uh, this love affair is over. And that we're done. There was no screaming uh, ham sandwich moment. I just told her that, well, it so happens, you know, we still had a week left to go in our vacation. We still had to go to Tikal and all of that. And so we just made a truce. I said, okay, I, I said, darling, I, I said, I am, I'm going to put this converse, let's put this conversation behind us. Uh, let's spend one more week down here for the good times. Uh, we're going to call a truce. We're going to go right on about uh, our vacation. So we were going to Tikal to eat mushrooms together at Tikal and uh, some other adventures in, uh, in our last week together. So we made a truce and we, uh, and we had our, uh, our last week together and I honestly do not remember guys the last time we made love uh, in Guatemala I, I don't know if it, the last time I, I remember I think I made some uh, you know very inappropriate joke you know that uh, Chris Christopher Chris, Chris Christopherson song for the good times I made some joke you know well one more for the road for the good times girl and uh, and that was it and then I told her uh, fortunately my real estate business allowed me to do this I I said you, you know Lulu just go on back to Austin without me uh, I'm gonna hang down here at Gringo Perdido and lick my wounds uh, for about another month uh, let this uh, blow over and we will see what happens to us when I get back and uh, I'm very happy to say and I give Lulu all the credit for this uh, we, we survived the breakup of and we have been uh, best friends ever since and uh, she was the one who uh, came down to Peru to uh, spend my 50th birthday with me. She came down there to Peru and Ecuador, I don't know, two or three times. And, uh, you know, she is the only person, well, not the only person, but kind of, of, of my old friends from Austin, you know, she came and visited me in Florida. Uh, last spring and she came up here this summer and uh, she's never gotten together with another man I which I'm sorry to report uh, as far as I know she has never been in love with another man and I and I think we've heard pretty much my track record uh, since then but uh, the woman knows that I love her and I know that she loves me and uh, for whatever reason the uh, the universe has 
put each other in our paths and I love you darling wherever you are and I'm actually coming home to give you a call I noticed she called last night to make sure I was in, enjoying the beautiful full moon. Yep. And uh, I told her I went out to enjoy the beautiful full moon to uh, help get over my latest heartache. I went out there to uh, get some advice from the moon considering my emotional roller coaster of a day yesterday and Sancho Panza promptly uh, squirted diarrhea all over himself. <laughs> Uh, that was me enjoying the moon and now it is clouded back up no full moon for me tonight and I am going home to call the woman I love who who's uh, never I have never blocked this woman's phone number in my life I have never blocked this woman's email in my life uh, I need to count how many uh, women uh, I have on my blocked uh, phone and, and blocked email address I think today I might have hit 20 women but uh, this is one of the few women who has never been banned my ham bone little tail. And she has been a true gift to my life, and I am sorry, the universe did not let it work out for us over a pound of butter. Uh, Oh, love, love, love. I highly suggest anybody listening to this wrap this up and call somebody you love tonight. While you still can. I'll be home in 30 minutes, Lulu. Assuming I make it over this steep pass with my flashing emergency brake failure lights as I head up over the mountain. Here I go over the steep hill. with the brake lights flashing. Bye guys.